Well, hello everybody. It's good to see you here. Thanks for coming back. And today we're going to be talking about a spiritual warfare strategy, which is taking your thoughts captive. It's pretty basic, but sometimes the most basic things are the most important things to go over because we can easily overlook it and think, I already know that no big deal, but you need to check yourself. Sometimes our thoughts can take our lives down a very dark road. And sometimes it just comes with one little thought. How do we take our thoughts captive? It looks looks like putting determination and energy into the way that you think. And once you make a decision to do something, you stick with that decision. And anything that will take you off that path or it will distract you onto something else, you need to stay focused on what you've already decided. And that's really hard to do, especially in today's world where we have constant distraction, there's temptations everywhere. It's easy to get off track, especially when it comes to the things of God. This is where we need to decide we are gonna discipline ourselves. This is what I've told myself. Discipline is sexy. Mm -hmm. It is, it's sexy. I think it's really sexy when someone shows up at the gym every day. I think it's super sexy when someone makes a coffee date and actually shows up on time. I have so much respect for somebody who follows through on the things that they say they're gonna do. I think deep down inside, you respect yourself more when you stick to the things that you've promised yourself. I'm just gonna use this as an example. I'm not trying to shame anyone, it's just an easy example. A lot of times, like around New Year's, we all make these promises that we're gonna lose however many pounds and we determine to change our habits. And over time, we start to not show up for ourselves. We say we're gonna wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the gym and run for an hour or do whatever. And we might do it in the beginning and then taper off. And when we don't show up for ourselves, subconsciously, we lose respect for ourselves. Not only are our friends who have heard us say this like a million times rolling their eyes, you yourself don't believe the things that you're saying. You actually don't trust yourself. If it's something that we wanna see in our friends and in our parents, then we need to show up for ourselves in the same way. This is what God is happy with. When we make a promise to him and we work hard to accomplish it, he sees that work and that effort and that is a gift to him. If something comes easy, it doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel important. But if something took a lot of time and effort, that gift is the most precious gift because we know that someone put their heart and their soul and their effort to it. In the same way, when we put our heart and our effort and our soul into developing what God wants us to develop, he sees that offering, he sees that sacrifice. That is a precious gift to him. Even in being disciplined can give the Lord a gift. And I wanna encourage you to do that. If we don't stop the enemy's thoughts from invading our mind, it won't be long until our faith begins to empower those thoughts and those demonic thoughts will begin to take root in our life. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mark 11, 23. This is a powerful verse about faith and confession, but the principle in this verse works in both the realm of God and the realm of the devil, okay? So if you're putting your faith in the things that God has to say, then that is a powerful position to be at. But if you're putting your faith in the things that the enemy is saying towards you, like when I was younger, I was told I was stupid and I believed that. I allowed that belief to take me into a job God didn't want for me, but I just thought, well, I'm dumb. I'm not capable of doing much more. So I'm just gonna settle for being a stripper because I know that I can't handle more than that. But that was a lie. That was not God's plan for my life. But because I believed that lie, my life went down a very dark direction for a long time. I wish I could take those years back. And that's why I do teachings like this, because I know that there's people out there that are making decisions based on a lie, something that the enemy had used someone to speak over them. One time, sometimes you hear something like you're ugly and you believe that lie and you treat yourself with such disrespect because you believe you're not worthy of love or appreciation or whatever that is. That's why it's so important to take our thoughts captive. Did you know that creative power gets released when the heart and the mouth get into agreement? It's a powerful thing. This is why you must be careful 
about what you believe in your heart and what you say with your mouth. When your heart and mouth get in sync with each other, it literally makes things come to pass. We hear this in the new age realm, the manifestation, we are manifesting. Well, it's kind of true because this is a law that God put in motion. Check it with that Bible verse. What we believe in our heart and say with our mouths, we can have. The devil knows this principle and he can use this against you. And a lot of times he uses your own mouth to put a curse on your life. Think about that. How many times have you said, oh my gosh, this always happens to me. Of course it happened to me. I never have any good luck. When we begin to say those things, guess what we begin to experience in our life? More of what we say. That's why it's super important to take dominion over our mouths, over the words that we speak over our lives, because those words have power. And when we believe that in our heart, now we're adding not only our words that have power, but our faith that gives that word even more power. We don't want to do that. This is why the devil loves to attack our mind. And for me, sometimes he'll give me a movie screen on my mind of the worst case scenario. And he'll just keep looping that over and over again. And my mind will go into so much fear and so much despair. He just wants me to get into the mindset of negativity. That is actually what I'm familiar with. That's how I grew up. My household was very negative. Everything was, oh gosh, when's the next problem going to happen? It was always the worst case scenario. I also believe the enemy knows how we grew up and the temperature of our household. It becomes a very familiar thing that he can just latch on to the things that were spoken in my childhood. He can say them now and it feels like just a natural thought because that's how I grew up. I didn't know very much different. For me, I have to discipline myself to say, wait a second, I am not in my childhood home. I don't need to believe that lie. I don't need to speak that lie over my life. I want something different. And because I want something different, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for the best. I'm going to speak the best over my life. I have to work hard at that, as do a lot of you. It's not actually what we are born with. How many people do you know that are born with just a silver spoon in their mouth? Everything is blessed. Everything seems easy. A lot of times those people don't even appreciate the blessings in their life because they can't see them. They've never had anything else. They don't know anything different. But if you are a person that has never had life easy and you start implementing God's word and your belief system according to what God is saying, and you begin to see your life shape and shift into something different. And you know what your life looked like before God. And now it is starting to look different. You can appreciate going from glory to glory. You actually know what it's like to not be blessed and to live under a curse and to, to have a harder thing. And then to experience the reality of how doing things God's way can actually change your life. You can understand that. There is a blessing to not always having things great and easy. You have to look at life like a spiritual exercise, that we're showing up to the gym every day, we're making good choices with God every day, and that we are going to see the fruit of our labor from showing up every day. Now imagine if I have always spent time with the Lord and allowed him to change me in the same way that I show up to the gym every day. Imagine how much victory I would have inwardly. That's just a little encouragement for you is that we're all showing up in the gym of life and we're all having to make choices to show up every day, to put our effort into what we need to put our effort into. And we will see fruit if we do invest the way God wants us to. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, Matthew 12, 34. So according to Jesus, whatever's in your heart is eventually gonna come out of your mouth. When your heart and mouth start working together, it's extremely important to put the right things in your heart. Mark 11, 23 says, whatever you believe in your heart and say with your mouth will come to pass. That is what people are talking about with manifestation. We need to really take our words more serious and our thoughts and our heart more serious. How do we change our heart? By reading the word of God, by watching things that elevate what God has to say. If we are only watching the news and only watching current TV shows, we're not feeding our spirit. We're not feeding our heart. And our heart begins to project the things that we are focusing on. I have been trying to discipline myself to not watch true crime. I know it's not a sin. It's not a sin to kind of see what's out there and how to protect yourself, but it's not good for my spirit to receive such negativity. I want my life to look more positive because negativity is something that I am familiar with. Trauma and tragedy and sadness and depression and when's the next shoe gonna drop? 
I think that's why I've been drawn to true crime. I'm wanting to look on how to protect myself and what signs to look for in a predator and all these kinds of things, which is great to educate yourself. Beyond a certain point, now it's become unhealthy. Now it's time to focus on where God wants my life to go. It's not the route of looking out for the next serial killer. That's not where God wants me to use my energy. I have enough information about that stuff. What I need to be focusing on is what will encourage my spirit, what will strengthen my faith, what will empower me to make better choices every day. And that's the word of God. I know sometimes it's really hard when you're going through something rough not to run your mouth off. But if you were to discipline yourself in those moments and just remember the principle of not speaking the things you don't want to see in your life, you're going to see a change. It's a scientific fact that when you speak something out loud, those words are verified and empowered in your mind. That's why the devil wants you to repeat every stupid thing that he says. By repeating out loud, you are helping him to build a stronghold in your own mind. This is another reason why it's so important to stay in the Word of God. As you spend time meditating on God's Word, your mind becomes renewed with God's way of thinking. God's Word brings a supernatural cleansing that washes your mind and your emotions from the contamination of everything that you're soaking in from the world. It's hard to get away from that stuff. So we must be intentional to spend time with God to renew our mind. Satan knows that empty heads are much easier to deceive. That's why he loves to target a believer that has made zero effort in filling his mind with the truth of God's word. Who are you gonna let control your mind? Who do you want to control and have influence on your life. Your mind is always gonna be filled with something. Are you gonna fill it with garbage? Because you can, that's your choice. Most people do. But if you want that amazing Zoe life, if you want to be empowered, if you wanna see God use you in a powerful way, then you need to fill up on all the things that he has to say. When you're hitting a rough patch, you're gonna prophesy good over your life. You're gonna have a roster to pull from. But if you don't know the word, what are you gonna say? You're not gonna have God's word hidden in your heart to pull it out when you actually need it. That's why it's important to meditate on the Word of God, to get it deep into your heart. I hope this is encouraging you to just take time and to fill up on the things that are actually going to change your life. And for me, when I first got saved, one of the things that I did was I used to listen to the Word of God on CD as I cleaned the house. And I've gotten away from that habit. And I used to have more of the Word of God available for me and I need to discipline myself to go back into that. I downloaded audio Bible and now I am disciplining myself to get back into the word, to implement it into my spirit so that I can have something powerful to share when the need strikes, that I'll just have it available, that I won't have to look it up or try and find it. It'll already be in my heart, in my mouth, ready to go. If you have a life verse that God has given you to encourage you in this season of your life, because I believe that our life goes through many seasons and many of us have different Bible verses at different times of our life. What is your Bible verse? Encourage others by sharing the word of God that encourages you. Let us know in the comments below and I will share mine too. Love you guys. I'm so grateful that you stuck with me. It was a long video today, but it was important to share. I'm so glad you stuck around. Whoever stuck around to the end of this video, I just say, you're the best. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you later. Hey, my friends, I would love for you to check out Armor of God Spiritual Warfare YouTube channel. These guys post daily content on spiritual warfare. This is a Catholic channel which hosts our brothers and sisters in the faith who love Jesus and certainly love equipping the saints with strategies for the days we're living in. You will learn so much, so don't be shy. Just subscribe, and please don't forget to tell them that Julia sent you.